An important concept in biochemistry is the equilibrium dissociation constant, Kd. Kd is an inverse measure of binding affinity. What this means is that a lower binding affinity is actually going to be a higher Kd, whereas a higher binding affinity corresponds to a lower Kd. So if you want a tighter binder, you want something with a low KD, and if you want a weaker binder, you would want a high KD. Although often when we're designing drugs and things, people want to get a lower KD, but not too low or else you get stuck on there forever. So why do we have this weird relationship? Well, it comes because the KD is actually the dissociation constant, the equilibrium one. So we got to be at equilibrium here when we're talking about this. But basically, it corresponds to the reverse reaction, if you were to think about a binding reaction. So it's them coming apart. Therefore, it's the K off over the K on, or the concentration of your kind of binding partners over the concentration of the bound complex at equilibrium. We'll talk a lot more about how this all works out mathematically, but it comes to the thing where you have the relationship where the KD equals the concentration of A, or of one partner, at which half of the other partner is bound at equilibrium. So you mix them together, and you look, and you see how much is bound once they've reached equilibrium. And if you have a tighter binder, well, what's that going to do? It's going to make more of the complex form. If more of the complex is formed, then you're going to have this bottom be bigger, and voila, your KD smaller. If you have less of it bound, well, then this bottom is going to be smaller, and then your KD is going to be bigger. You can think about it intuitively by thinking about what does it mean if your KD is lower in terms of kind of just how much stuff needs to be around for you to be bound. If your KD is low, that means that even if there's not that much of your partner around, you're still going to likely be bound. Either when you run into it, you're going to bind it tightly, and or if you bind it tightly, you're unlikely to let it go. So those would be our K on and our K off. The smaller the K off or the bigger the K on, the smaller the KD. The bigger the K off or the big um, smaller the K on, the bigger the KD. Often when we're dealing with biochemistry, it's the KD, it's the K off that's going to matter more because we're limited by diffusion for like really tight binders. But anyway, so if we have a small KD, that means that even if there's not that much of the thing around, we're not, we're going to be bound. Whereas if we have a high KD, well, this is saying we've got to have a ton of that other partner around in order for us to be bound. Basically, every time we turn around, we've got, we're like running into them. So even if we don't like them that much, even if we only kind of like bind really loose, like if we just bind because we run into it, we're going to let it go really quick. And so we're not going to find much of it be bound. Not until we kind of like crank and crank it up are we actually going to have enough that when we're unbinding, we're binding. And even though we might unbind really quickly, if we go and we take that census, we're going to find that half of it will be bound. Because remember that when we talk about an equilibrium, we're not talking about like things being static. It's a, it's a dynamic equilibrium. So things are still binding and unbinding, but that basically they're going at the same rate. And so at equilibrium, we have that we're forming the complex at the same rate as we're breaking it up. And therefore the concentrate, the like ratio we're gonna have is going to be stable. And that ratio is going to correspond to that KD. When you're at, you have a concentration of one partner, that's the KD for the binding, then you're gonna have half of its partner bound. And if you have a KD where, um, so if you have a lower KD, that's going to mean that even if there's not that much of the thing there, half of you is gonna be bound. If you have a higher KD, then you have to have more of your partner around in order for half of you to be bound. We often draw this in logarithmic form to make this halfway point kind of easier to see and to make it so that we our values aren't scrunched up a bunch. We'll go into all of these different things, but this is the main gist. The KD is the inverse of the KA. So the KA, this isn't the acid KA. This is the KA as in the association constant, which is just the KEQ for the forward reaction for the binding. The KD is one over that. So it's the, it's the equilibrium equation for the unbinding, the dissociation. It takes into account K off, the rate of unbinding, and K on, the rate of binding. And this is going to tell you kind of um, how tight the binding is in an inverse measure. Note that the KD is not going to depend on the concentration. 
The concentration will impact how much of it is bound. And the KD, we have it as the, like a concentration. But the KD itself is intrinsic to this K-off and the K-on, which are properties of the enzyme itself. So even though when you're changing the concentration of one thing, the KD itself isn't changing, the amount that you actually go and you find bound is going to change depending on the concentration as we're seeing here. But those differences come from the KD in a way. So basically, the KD is not affected by the concentration, but the proportion of it that you find bound is affected by the concentration because it's like whether or not you're more likely to find it when you turn around. If there's more of it around, you're more likely to bump into it. If there's not much around, you're less likely to bump into it. But then how much you need to bump into in order for half of you to be bound at equilibrium, that is where you have kind of the differences between a strong binder, so something like this greener, and a purple binder, so something like this, a weaker binder, something like this purple.